Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Spencer Tracy and Loretta Young in A Man's Castle. Lux presents Hollywood. A Man's Castle, a drama of two people who have nothing but themselves, yet find love and beauty and hope in a world that's all but passed them by. Starred, as they were in the original cast, are Spencer Tracy and Loretta Young with Arthur Hole. Tonight's special guest is Father Edward J. Flanagan, founder and director of the home made world famous by Spencer Tracy's recent picture, Boys Town. Louis Silvers conducts our music. If you were a screen star with a million-dollar complexion, what soap would you use? As fine as money you could buy, of course. So we think it's a pretty wonderful compliment to Lux Toilet Soap that nine out of ten famous screen stars use it. Lux Toilet Soap has active lather that removes thoroughly the dust, dirt, and stale cosmetics that might otherwise remain to choke the pores. It's when pores are choked in this way that unattractive cosmetic skin develops with its dullness, tiny blemishes, and enlarged pores. Use cosmetics all you like, but be sure to use Lux Toilet Soap regularly before you renew makeup, always before you go to bed at night. You'll find Lux Toilet Soap does a thorough job. Begin using it tonight. And now, the producer of the Lux Radio Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Before they were big enough to see over a windowsill, both Spencer Tracy and Loretta Young were established actors. Loretta made her first movie at the age of four, and Spencer Tracy, overlooking his two Academy Awards, still contends that his best performances were delivered as a boy when he gave remarkably successful impressions of getting out of bed for school. He'd respond to his mother's call with a great clatter and dropping of shoes on the floor, then promptly back, bounce back to bed. Spence hails from Milwaukee, where he had three special friends. One was called Mousy, another was Ratty, and the third was, and still is, Pat O'Brien. Years later, he and Pat shared a boarding house room in New York where Spence learned dramatics and how to live on pretzels and rice. His previous education had been acquired during enlistments in Ripon College and the United States Navy. First to employ him on Broadway was the Theater Guild. They decided he was worth $15 a week to act in RUR. He played a robot. Spence today has millions of fans, but none is more enthusiastic about him than he is about his favorite actors, George M. Cohen and the late Will Rogers. He lives in San Fernando Valley and has a tremendous liking for boats, horses, and black tea. His farm is also the address of his two sharpest critics, his young son and daughter, who admit he's all right in pictures, but much prefer Johnny Weismuller as Tarzan. Mr. Tracy, who appears through courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, is temporarily on the 20th Century Fox lot, making Stanley and Livingston. At the same studio, Loretta Young just completed the story of Alexander Graham Bell, another fine performance, we're told, by the girl who reached the heights of stardom through the unbeatable combination of natural talent and hard work. Loretta's the most famous of Hollywood's own four daughters. For the screen also claims her three delightful sisters, Sally Blaine, Polly Ann, and Eugenia Young. With a personality as enchanting as her beauty, Miss Young, as well as Mr. Tracy, starred on the screen in A Man's Castle. And both are here resuming their celebrated roles, Loretta as Trina and Spencer as Bill. Also from the film comes Arthur Hole, playing Bragg. Now it's time for the play. The Lux Radio Theater presents Spencer Tracy and Loretta Young in A Man's Castle. It's a midsummer evening in New York. On a bench in Central Park sits a young man, a sartorial sensation in evening clothes, complete with tails, Inverness cape, opera hat, and cane. With grand nonchalance, this modern Beau Brummel is feeding the pigeons from a bag of popcorn which he holds in his lap. He flicks an occasional glance at the other end of the bench toward the girl who sits there, shabbily dressed but defiantly neat. The girl is acting very strangely. As she watches the pigeons eating, there's a desperate, almost hysterical look in her eyes. The man in evening clothes studies her for a moment and then speaks. 
quietly. What's the matter? Come on, spill it. I've been watching you ever since you sat down here. You look like you were rehearsing something. What is it? Please. Please, I'm sorry. I... Come back here. What's the rush? Let me go or I'll... you what? I'll get down on my hands and knees for some of that popcorn. Hey, what is this? I thought I knew all the panhandling routines. Or are you the little girl reporter working on a sob story? Oh, please. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you really hungry? I ain't eaten in two days. Two days? Why not? I haven't any money. Neither have the pigeons, but they eat. And regular. Yeah, it must be great to be a pigeon. It's always somebody throwing you crumbs. If you had the brains of a pigeon, you wouldn't be hungry. Come on, let's eat. Eat? Do you mean it? I said it, didn't I? Come on. But, uh, where are you taking me? Well, the uh, Ritz roof is open. The Ritz roof? Well, I didn't ask for anything like that. I I, I can't go in there in these clothes anyway. Oh, I, I... shut up. Clothes got nothing to do with eating. Let's go. Want anything else? Oh, no, thanks. This is plenty. Yeah. For a pint size like you, you certainly can put it away. You're hungry, all right. Uh-huh. Yeah, but if you think I fell for that line of hooey, you're crazy. Nobody ever has to starve in a town like this. Why not? Because you don't. There's food all over the joint. Well, yeah, but you got to get near to eat it. Were you ever out of work for a whole year? I've been out of work all my life. The unemployment problem never bothered me any. Well, it's all right for you. You're rich. You wear your tails and your top hat and you eat steaks a foot thick. A <laughs> foot thick. You've got what it takes. Sure, I got what it takes, all right. Hey, uh, waiter. Yes, sir? Call the manager. Anything wrong, sir? No, no, everything's swell. I just want to see him a minute. Yes, sir. You know, you should never ought to skip meals. Oh, that was the best food ever I ate. I feel better now. You look better, too. Yeah. <laughs> if you filled out a little, you'd get by in a crowd at that. Well, you can't help the way you're made. Why can't you? Good evening, sir. Hello. You the manager? Uh, yes, sir. Did you want to see me? Yeah, sit down. What? Well, uh, yes, sir. Well, sir? You know, mister, there's supposed to be 12 million people in this country without work. Did you know that? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, I... Yeah, uh... and a lot of them are starving, so they tell me. Now, you take this young lady, for instance. Up to an hour ago, she hadn't eaten for two days, so I brought her in here and fixed her up. She feels swell now. Says it's the best food she ever ate. Well, I, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. <laughs> the only trouble is she ain't got a cent, and neither have I. What? Uh, what's that? Yeah, yeah, so the feed's on you, brother. Well, now, look here. Now, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways of handling a case like this. You could call a cop and have the pair of us thrown in the can. Now, just a minute. Now, we'd be sent to the island where we'd be fed by the state for 30 days at least. The more bums the state has to feed, the more taxes you people have to pay. Is this your idea of now, a Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is one of the joints that throws out enough leftover grub in a week to feed a thousand people. So you can afford one on the house once in a while. Now, look here. Am I know. right or wrong? Now, I'll tell you what I'll do with you. I'll, I'll, I'll put it up to your own customers here. I'll ask them whether it's right for you to let somebody die of hunger right outside your own dump. If they say I'm wrong, I'll admit it. No, but look, you... Ladies and gentlemen. No, no, shut up. Go on, go on. Get out of here. Get out. Okay, okay. The case is dismissed. Come on there, uh, who's it's... There's nothing like a good walk after dinner. You shouldn't have done that. We might have been arrested. Don't be a dope. Where do you live? I might as well take you home. Oh, that'd be all right if I had a home. What's the matter with you? Haven't you got anything? No. What do you figure on spending the night? I don't know. Have you got a grip? No. Well, get one somewhere. Then go to a hotel and register. Stay there till they hand you a bill and then tell them you're broke. And then what happens? Then they throw you out and you go to another hotel. Oh, I couldn't do that. Why not? Well, I'd be afraid to... Did, do you live in hotels that way? No, no. I got no use for hotels. Oh. Oh. Uh, what do you do for a living? I live. Yeah, I know, but I, I mean, you must do something. Those clothes. No. Oh, them? Uh-huh. Here. Yeah. Look at the front of my shirt. What do you see? Why, the front of your shirt. Yeah. Now watch. Oh. Hmm, now what do you see? Well, it lights up. Your old chest lights up. Yeah, sure, sure. You see what it says or can't you read either? Uh, Cavalier Barbershop, 16 chairs. Say, so you're an advertiser. Yeah, sure. Two bucks a night for this. Oh. All you got to do is walk up and down and flash the light on and off. Oh. Is, is this your regular job? No, no, I don't believe in regular jobs. I'm only doing this for a friend of mine. I sub for him on his night off. Oh. 
Uh, I suppose I'll have to get a place for to sleep tonight. What's your name? Trina. Trina? Uh-huh. I knew a cat once called Trina. What's yours? Bill. Bill. Oh, that's nice. Well, here we are, who's it? The river on one side, the railroad tracks on the other. Is this where you live? Yeah. Vagville on the Hudson. Built right smack on the city dump. How do you like it? Oh, it's well. Gee, I've been in the city a whole year and never even knew there was such a place. That's one of the best things about it, the privacy. Uh, it's the only way to live. No rent, no taxes, running water, a whole river of it. The whole dump is lousy with southern exposure. <laughs> That's what I like best, them train whistles. To remind you of other places. You hear them all night. Don't you love the sound of it? It's scary, kind of. Nah. Gangway, get out of my way. Here I come, that's what it says. Come on. Which one of these shacks do you live in? I don't. Mostly I sleep in the open. When it rains, I take my choice. They're all my pals here, and I can bunk with any one of them. Oh, they must be swell people. The best. It's funny, when people got nothing, they act like human beings. We get along fine here. It's like one big happy family. Get away from me, I tell you. Don't bother me, or I'll smack you in the teeth. What's that? That's a guy named Bragg. He don't get along so well with his girlfriend. Oh. Now, go on. Oh, no, you don't. You stand right where you are. Did you hear what I said? Let go and I'll brain you. You can't two-time me. I'll kill you first. Ah! Bragg! Bragg! What do you want? Why don't you let Flossie alone? Why don't you mind your own business? Let her alone or I'll come over there and help her clean up the place with you. Ah, oh, shut up. What? Nothing. That's better. I was going to ask Flossie to put you up for the night, but maybe that's not so hot. Well, I, I could sleep in the open, I guess. No, that takes training. I got it. Bare left. Here we are. He went up into the mountain with his disciples. Hello, Ira. What's the good word? Say, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's the good word. That looks like that Gideon Bible I swiped out of a hotel last week. Oh, Bibles can't be stolen. The good word is free. I only wish I could get you to read it, William. I did. I skimmed through it one night. There's some very good reading in it. There's one place especially, the Songs of Solomon. It's great stuff. Who's it's meet, Ira? Ira here used to be a minister, but now he's a night watchman. Oh, not used to, Bill. I am a minister. If I choose to live down here, I have a reason. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Anyway, this is Hoosett's. How do you do? Oh, nicely, thank you. Yeah, nicely. Only she ain't got a place to sleep. I thought maybe after you checked out, she could camp here for the night. Welcome. When do you go to work? 11.30. Okay, she'll check in about 12. Oh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Nuts. Come on. Where are we going now? What do you care? You want to see where I sleep? Yeah, where? You see that barge over there? Right over there? Uh-huh. The reason I like to sleep on that barge is because there's no roof on it. Oh. Gee, it must be wonderful with the water rocking it. Like a cradle, sort of, huh? Look at, look at them ships out there with those sails. They look so kind of peaceful and contented like. Yeah. They've been laying there for years, rotting away with barnacles. That's what you get when you're anchored. Well, still in all, it's restful. Restful, yeah. So is a graveyard. Bill. What? You're a funny guy. Yeah. Why? Oh, I don't know. Well, wh what do you do when you're not walking around with your chest lit up? <laughs> oh, I do a lot of things. Or maybe nothing at all. Sometimes I walk the stilts. Stilts? Yeah, up on Broadway. Oh, I know what you mean. Way up in the air on those long wooden legs w with a sign on your back. That's right. Is it fun? I wouldn't do it if it wasn't. I like being up there looking over the heads of the crowds. Hey, you're a pretty nosy name, ain't you? I don't mean to be. Forget it. Bill. Bill, I want to thank you. You've been swell to me. I got your free feed, if that's what you mean. I guess you need somebody to look after you. Maybe. And, well, maybe you need somebody to look after you, too, Bill. Me? Oh, I don't mean like that, but... Well, who cooks for you and cleans your certs and things like that? Nobody. I do it myself. But wouldn't it be better if you had somebody? 
Now, listen, Hoosers, don't be getting any funny ideas. Oh, I'm not. I don't like to be tied down, see? I live alone because that's the way I like to live. I sleep in the open because that's how I like to sleep. And I say what I want and I do what I want, and that's the way I'm going to do things always, see? Oh, but I wouldn't tie you down, Bill. Why, how could I? Yeah, sure, how could you? I'm like the wind, and you can't grab air, can you? Or can you? within, and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Of course, this isn't a church, but I am a minister, and the words are the same. In the eyes of God, you're now man and wife. Man and wife. Bill, did you hear? Yeah, I heard. Those whom God hath joined... Handcuffed, you mean? Bill, you said you wanted to. Yeah, sure, I got weak. But I told you what it means, right next to nothing. I know, Bill, it's it's just the idea. I know. Hello, Trina. Oh, hello, Flossie. Where'd you get all that energy from? No, 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 no. Every time I see you, you're working. Oh, I was out of work for a whole year. Making up for lost time, I guess. This kind of work's not real work. It's fun. You're the only woman I ever knew who had seven wash days a week. <laughs> well, Bill's particular, he is. Anything that goes next to his skin's got to be clean. You know, Flossie, I guess he's the cleanest man in the whole world. One of these days, maybe Bill will buy me a washing machine. But that ain't so important just yet. The main thing, Flossie, is a stove. Bill's going to get me a real stove. For a joint like this? Huh? What's the matter with the one you got? Oh, I can only make stew on it. I could cook Bill some wonderful things if I had a real stove. And he's going to get me one, too, as soon as he gets the money. Who ever heard of a bindle stiff getting money? What's a bindle stiff? A hobo. Can't stay put, except maybe in jail. I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, Bill can make all the money he wants if he wants to. He's got personality, Bill has. He's different. If he was different, would he keep you here in a dump like this? Well, what's the matter with you, Flossie? How can you say a thing like this? This ain't a dump. Not to me, it ain't. It's sort of a... Oh, I can't find the word for it. You know them things they got in the middle of the streets where people can stand till the traffic's safe? Uh, what do you call them? Safety zones? Safety zone. That's it. That's how I feel about this place. Like a sort of a clearing in the forest. Quiet and safe and peaceful. Oh, that's the only thing I don't like. Them train whistles. <laughs> I guess I know why you don't like them. Getting scared, ain't you? Always wondering if that man of yours will be on one of them trains someday. No. Uh-uh. Bill's good to me. He gives me everything I want. Yeah, except maybe a stove. There, you see, Bill? Look at that one over there in the back of the window. Queen of the kitchen. Stove to be proud of. Come on, get out of here. I ain't no window shopper. Oh, it's beautiful, ain't it? And cheap, too. Only five dollars. Huh? Well, that is five dollars down and only two dollars a month for only twelve months and no interest. Yeah, no interest is right as far as I'm concerned. I don't go for anything on the installment plan. And only a year that stove would be off. A year? You think I'm going to hang around this town a year? Oh, it's such a beautiful all-around kind of a stove. Forget it. Go on home. Ain't you coming, too? Not yet. What's for supper tonight? Stu? Stu. Go on home. Bill. Bill, come down close to me. I want to whisper something. What? Just that. <laughs> Goodbye, Bill. Kissing me in the street. I ain't that cute. Queen of the kitchen. Five dollars down. Queen of the... Hey, Bragg. Bragg. Hello, Bill. What's doing? Nothing. I've been looking for you. How about that two bucks you owe me? What are you hounding me for? I've been working my head off trying to get Doe to pay you off. Why well, I'm working right now. You don't look at What kind of work? Serving a summons. You get two bucks to throw, but this one's so tough there's a bonus goes with it. Ten bucks for this one. Well, why don't you serve it and get the money? Why don't I? What do you suppose I've been trying to do for three days? It's for a dame and a show. You can't get to her. What do you mean you can't get to her? She's got a bodyguard. I'm the third guy that's tried this week. Hmm. 
Ten bucks, huh? Hey, suppose I serve you summons for you. I could use five bucks. Will you split? I'm telling you, you can't do it. She's got a bunch of gorillas with her day and night. Will you split? Sure, but you can't get to her. I'll take care of that. I got a touch of gorilla in me myself. Is that you, Bill? Who else would it be? I'm just fixing dinner. It'll be ready in a minute, I think. Yeah. What's this book? That? Oh, oh, that's the Bible. Ira gave it to me. He wants me to read it. Yeah. There's one thing in here you don't want to miss. Gee, I wish I had some kind of a stove, Bill. Listen. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Get this. Thy cheeks are comely with rows of jewels. It's hard to cook with this kind of a fire. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet. You can't get an even heat. Thy neck is a tower of ivory. How fair and how pleasant thou art, O love. Thy neck is a tower of ivory. You know you're a heck of a looking woman for a guy like me. Yeah. I don't know if this is going to be a very good stew. Look at you. Skinny, no hips. Yeah, I bet I put those potatoes in too soon. A man like me ought to have a woman who's a woman. You're just bones. Yes, sir, that's just what I did. I put those potatoes in too That's soon. all you are, bones. Do you know that? Well, I'm young, kind of. That don't make no difference. Maybe it does. Maybe I'll sort of fill out after, huh? No, you'll never look like a woman. You ain't got it in you ever look like a woman. <laughs> what difference does it make as long as you're good to me? I ain't good. You don't get that idea in your head. That's the way to spoil them, being good to them. You got to step around if you're going to be with me or get your teeth knocked out. I think I ought to knock them out anyway. Come here. Bill, what's the matter? What's happened to your face? You're all cut. Never mind my face. Here. Look at this. What is it? It's a receipt. That's what it is. Five good hard-earned bucks for the queen of the kitchen. Bill, you bought the stove. My stove. Shut up. You got your stove. I feel like... I ought to... What, Bill? Come here. Little old hoosets. Oh, Bill. That's the first time you've ever kissed me like that. Bill, I love you. I love you so much. Cut it out now. You women get some phony ideas, all right. <laughs> Come on, I'll get to work. And if that stew's burned, I'll pour it down your back. <laughs> Down comes the curtain on the first act of A Man's Castle, starring Spencer Tracy and Loretta Young. In a few minutes, they will return for the second act of the play. Now, during our short intermission... Say, Bill, who's the girl in blue? Where? Well, by George, I didn't know she was here. Excuse me, old man. Well, of all... Say, Ned, who's that girl Bill's running after? See the one in blue? There. Oh, sure I see. Who wouldn't? The one in blues. Best-looking girl in the room. You want to meet her? You bet I want to meet her. Come on, let's get going. Who's the girl in blue? Well, whoever she is, she's popular. The kind of girl men want to meet. She's the kind of girl who's making the most of her looks. You can be sure she hasn't let unattractive cosmetic skin develop. The little blemishes and enlarged pores that are from chocolate pores. Popular girls everywhere use Lux Toilet Soap to be sure of thorough cleansing. The active lather of this gentle white soap carries away from the pores every trace of stale cosmetics, dust, and dirt. It's foolish to run risks when it's so easy to give your skin this care the screen stars use. Nine out of ten of them use Lux Toilet Soap. It's the care your skin needs. So be wise. Use it regularly. Before you renew makeup, always before you go to bed. Nine out of ten screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. Mr. DeMille. We continue with A Man's Castle, starring Spencer Tracy and Loretta Young. A warm September afternoon, a few weeks later. In the busy Times Square district, the passers-by gaze upward at a strange sight. A giant 15 feet tall who strolls calmly above them, his long wooden legs swinging easily his trouser cuffs flapping in the breeze. 
Bill on stilts chooses his steps carefully. Away from the admiring crowd, they take him down a side street to a row of tenements. There he pauses and, leaning on the windowsill of a room on the second floor, calls loudly. Hey, Mug. Mug, where are you? Hello, Stilts. Gee. How are you, kid? How's the bum leg? Oh, it's... it's all right. I can get around a little. <clears throat> Gee, Stilts, I thought you died or something. Where you been? Where are the Yanks playing this week? Chicago. All right. You wanted Lou Gehrig to autograph a baseball for you, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I had to put it up to him, didn't I? Did he? Did he? He sure did. Look, here's the ball. To my pal Joey, signed Lou Gehrig. Gee, Stilts. Gee. I had to go all the way to Chicago to see Lou. Gee, Stilts. Thanks. Did you hop a freight? Rode the rods all the way. Yeah, I ain't got the cinders out of my hair yet. Thanks. And Lou Gehrig wrote this himself? In person. Is that Stilts, Joey? Look, Ma, look. The baseball Stilts promised me. With Lou Gehrig's autograph. He signed it himself. Stilts went all the way to Chicago to get it. I gotta show the kids. Hello, Stilts. Hiya. We missed you. Have you really been west? Yeah, west of 8th Avenue. That was just a stall for the kid. What about the ball and the signature? Ah, uh, that's forgery. I wrote it myself, but he won't know the difference, so it's okay. Hey, look, I'm glad you're home. I wanted to see you. <clears throat> Here, here's a few bucks. Stilts, how can I go on taking money from you when I don't even know who you are? What difference does it make? I got no use for money. You need it. Just a case of supply and demand. Why won't you tell me your name? I never asked you yours, did I? No. I got no use for names. But I want to know, so I can thank you. Cut it. Now, if you pull any of that, I'll stay away from here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to stay away a while anyway. I begin to feel like a native around here. I'm blowing town. For good? Good or bad, I don't know. Who knows? Where are you going? That depends on which freight I hop. Well, you don't like me to thank you, but I... Ah, forget it. Only get this. I've been slipping your chicken feet, but I might get hot in a crap game one of these days and clean up, and when I do, I'll send you a heavy chunk of dough some fine morning. And you pack up and get out of here. Take that kid to the country. Maybe he can't hop freights, but anyway, you can see him go by, and that's better than nothing, isn't it? Well, so long. So long, Stills. God bless you. <laughs> Hiya, Trina. Oh, hello. Where's Bill? <clears throat> Out somewhere. Where? I don't know. What? If I had a wife like you in my shack, I'd be home all the time. The trouble with Bill, he don't appreciate you. That's some man you got yourself, kid. He suits me. Yeah, but you suit him. You wouldn't think so from the way he's always playing you down, crabbing about how skinny you are. Well, I am skinny. No, you're not. Slim, but not skinny. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah? Sure. You're a good-looking kid. I've been watching you for a long time, ever since you come here. Well, you better not let Bill hear you say that. He's got a temper, Bill has. He's liable to break you in half, right smack in half. Oh, no, he wouldn't. Bill's too busy. Busy with what? All I know is there's a blonde in a show on Broadway that's been on his trail lately. A blonde in a show? Yeah, he made a killing that time he served a summons on that dame. He beat up two of her gorillas, and she's kind of took a fancy to him. Some dames are like that. I guess he goes for her, too. How do you know? Because he told me. You're a liar. Bill's no cheat. If he wanted anybody else, he'd tell me first. Well, if he ever does, you'll know where I'm at. You? Ugh. If I'd never even known Bill, and, and you were the last person in the world, you couldn't get near me. So how do you like that? Swell. Gives me something to work for. Different men work different ways. Me, I got one principle. Take your time. You're worth it, Trina. You're swell. Get out of here, Bragg, and stay out. Sure. There's no hurry. No hurry at all. Well, maybe we ought to get down to facts. What's the party for, Miss LaRue? To get acquainted. You showed up those two little Fauntleroys that were supposed to keep process servers away from me. I gave them the air. I'm, uh, I'm in the market for a new bodyguard. You don't need no bodyguard. You look like you can take care of yourself, all right. 
I always have. Yeah, well, I gotta beat it. What for? Stick around. I need a couple of laughs. Anyway, it's raining. There's no matinee today. And uh, you don't have to be afraid of me. Me? I ain't afraid of nobody. <laughs> That's the brave little boy. Listen, I figure may maybe I'm not gonna be around when that suit against me comes up. I got a chance to go to London. London? Yeah. You might as well stay home. Italy. That's the place. Ever been to Italy? No, have you? No, but I'm going someday. There's a place, Italy. All I ever do over there is ride around on boats and play the guitars. I met a little Italian girl once. No, oh, well. <laughs> I suppose you know all about women. I know one thing about them, all of them. What? They're all female. Is that a compliment or a pan? It's a fact. Well, don't go. Say, how long does it take you to get acquainted? Me? I'm easy to meet and hard to forget. What? <laughs> What's the joke? Nothing. You're all right. I like you better all the time. You grow on me. Yeah? Yeah. Sit down. You know, um, maybe you're right about not going to London. Maybe Italy would be better. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? You women get some phony ideas, all right. Some very phony ideas. Hi, Ira. Evening, William. What's going on down at the dock? There's a crowd down there. Oh, nothing very important. Bragg's making a speech to some of the tenants. Beefing again, huh? Why should certain guys have all the money there is? Well, I got a beef for him, too. Why? They're on the inside, that's all. They tell you to go out and get a job. What job? There ain't no such animal. Look at me. I'm skilled labor, one of the best toy packers in the business. What's a toy packer? Shipping, Bill. Packing toys to ship. I'm one of the best men in the business. Used to work for Stark and Lee, where Ira works. They let me out without any notice, not a day. For getting drunk? Me? Say, I never got drunk on the job in my life. They claimed some stuff was missing. Just the same old alibi to let me out and save a couple of dollars expenses. Listen, Bragg, we know you. If they let you out, it was your own fault. All right, don't believe me. Walk out on me. You'll see someday. Well, looks like you've lost your audience, Bragg. You should never steal around supper time. Ah, that's it. If they had brains instead of stomachs, they wouldn't be what they are. I'm sick of them. I'm going to blow this dump as soon as I get some dough. That'll be never. Is that so? Listen, that toy factory I was talking about, they fired me, didn't they? They owe me something, and I'm going to collect. Get this, Bill. They got an old tin can they call a safe. Every Friday, they get ten grand for the payroll, and it stays in the safe till Saturday noon. It'd be a pushover, Bill, if you went in with me. Five grand apiece, Bill. What do you say? In the first place, what do I want with five grand? Number two, if I needed the money, I'd go out and make it. And number three, Trina tells me you've been hanging around the shack while I'm away and she don't like it. I told her I'd speak to you about it. There's only one language you can understand, Bragg, and this is it. <clears throat> Good night, Bragg. What's the matter, Bill? It's only nine o'clock. Did I ask you? No. Well, shut up. Then. <laughs> I'll let you have a couple in the ribs. Bill, stop it. Did that hurt you? No. Not when you don't mean it. I suppose I slugged your heart. Ah, you wouldn't. Don't be so sure. <laughs> Bill. What? Do you like being with me? I ain't so nuts about it. You're pretty skinny. Yeah, but I, you're not tired of me yet, are you? I don't know. Maybe. Hey, listen. What's the idea of keeping that skylight closed? When I rented this dump, I put that in special. What do you keep it shut for? Well, I thought maybe it might rain or something. Suppose it does. Rain's good for you. It makes you grow. Yeah, that's the way to live. You can breathe now. Bill. Bill, why do you always keep looking up at the sky for? Because when you're dead, you get a hunk of earth. When you're alive, you want to hold on to your hunk of blue. That's all I got in the world. That's all anybody's got. A hunk of blue. Bill, I've been thinking. There couldn't be a heaven much better than this, could there? I mean, when it's quiet all around and we're close, like now. You know, I never noticed a kid but your eyes are sky color, sort of. 
You've got a hunk of blue in each glim. Yeah, but that don't stop me from clouting you on the chin any minute. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> You're all right. You're a swell kid. I like you plenty. Do you, Bill? Yeah, but don't get figuring on that too much. Because how much I like a woman ain't nothing to bet money on. Don't let yourself get in too deep, see? Bill, you, you mean that you... No, no, not yet. Oh. But I'm apt to hand it to you any day. Uh, who can tell? Suppose I wake up some morning with a taste in my mouth like wet hen feathers. I'm just as apt to take a stroll for myself as not. But maybe that won't be right away. I mean, not tomorrow or quite so soon, huh? No, you can't tell. Nobody never knows how a guy's apt to feel some morning. Bill, listen. You like babies, don't you? What's the difference if I like them or not? Well, it makes a difference, a big difference, if you didn't. Why? Because you're going to have one. What? Oh, I've known her for a long time, several months. I I thought I'd be afraid to tell you. But now I ain't afraid of nothing. Say, listen. Oh, don't say anything, Bill, please, not till I finish. I want you to know something. It's your baby and it's mine, but you've got nothing to worry about. I didn't mean to tell you at all, but... Oh, it's just too grand and wonderful to keep to myself. You can't understand that, Bill. You're a man. <laughs> you needn't look like that, darling. I ain't afraid of you. I've changed a lot. Only a little while ago, I was all alone. And then you came along, and there was the two of us. And pretty soon, there's going to be three of us. You can never leave me now, Bill. Never. Never. Even if you go away, I've got you now. No matter where you go or what you do, I've got you, Bill. I've got you. Wait a minute. Yes, Bill? Is this on the level? Yes, Bill? Let me out of here. Are you leaving me, Bill? What if I was? You'd have no kick. No, Bill. I... I just suppose I'd be lonely again like I was before I met you. But the, it wouldn't be the same exactly because... I got something to look forward to now. Yeah, I'll say you have. I'll never be lonely when my son comes. How do you know it'll be a son? I prayed for a son. I thought you didn't believe in that sort well, of sure stuff. sure I do. Well, you told me you didn't. I lied. I didn't want you to get sore at me. But I guess you're angry now, aren't you? Why should I be? It's your funeral. Sure, sure. It's my funeral. I'm going to stand on my own feet now. I'm going to bring my son into the world, and I'm going to take care of him and love him always. And as far as I'm concerned... Oh, you too, Bill, always. That goes without saying. You're a free man, Bill. As free as a bird. Remember that. I will. Frank. Frank, come on out. Open up. What do you want from me? I want to scram out of here right away tonight. Only it so happens I can't go unless I leave some money behind. Enough to take care of somebody, a couple of people, for a long time. I got to have plenty of money, see? I haven't got a dime, Bill. Not a dime. No, but you know where to get it. Oh, you mean the toy factory? Yeah, come on, spill it. It's a cinch, Bill, a cinch. How about Ira? He's the watchman down there. Ira, that's the easiest part of it. All the guy does down there is snooze. We could walk away with a building and he wouldn't know it. All we need is a couple of drills and some gunpowder and boom. Yeah? What's the best time? About one in the morning. All right. I got something to attend to first down around Broadway, and I'll meet you. Half past 12 at 39th and 8th. I'll meet you, Bill. I'll have all the stuff ready. Yeah, we'll be on time. And keep your mouth shut. <laughs> we pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Spencer Tracy and Loretta Young have just concluded the second act of A Man's Castle with Arthur Hole. They'll be heard in Act Three after our short intermission. Now, just before Mr. DeMille brings on our special guest, a word to all our women listeners. Lovely women everywhere use Lux Toilet Soap because they know beautiful skin makes any woman charming. You want to keep your complexion lovely to look at and thrilling to touch? Then don't risk unattractive cosmetic skin dullness, little blemishes, and large pores. So many women actually spoil their looks because they carelessly let the pores become choked with dust, 
dirt, and stale cosmetics. Use cosmetics all you like, but use Lux Toilet Soap regularly, as nine out of ten screen stars do. It has active lather that removes stale rouge and powder thoroughly. That's why Lux Toilet Soap really works. Your host, Mr. DeMille. And now during our intermission, before we go on with Act Three of A Man's Castle, we bring you the distinguished guest of the evening. In our play, Bill, Bragg, Trina, and the others are people at loose ends, irresponsible people, to whom the world has denied a fair chance. Our guest, on the other hand, is a man who gives a fair chance to boys who otherwise wouldn't have it. Gives them the most important things in life, food, shelter, and ideals. Once again, we, ex we extend our stage far eastward and bring you the guide and founder of Omaha's famous boys' town, Father Edward J. Flanagan. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. I agree with you that the people in your play have hardly had a fair chance. Still, I don't believe that Bill, so perfectly portrayed by my friend Spencer Tracy, would ever have been so tempted if he had been given the right start. As you know, I've always maintained that there is no such thing as a bad boy. A boy may be misunderstood, neglected, or misguided, but not really bad. To prove this, our records show that not one of the hundreds of boys who have been citizens of Boys Town during the last 20 years has become criminally involved since he left our community. We believe that a boy, if properly guided during the early years of his life, if given responsibility, self-confidence, and a sense of what's right and wrong, will not find it difficult to cast aside temptation and become a good, honest citizen. As training for just this, our boys govern themselves as much as possible, electing their own mayor who governs them with a committee of six. These serve also as a court of justice, and lawbreakers are hailed before it. The worst punishment meted out is to have the culprit stand with his back to the screen during the Saturday night movies. I have tried to persuade the boys that this is too severe, but they uh, voted to keep the rules as it stands. Our resident citizens now number over 200 boys of every race, creed, and color. The only two qualifications for citizenship in Boys Town are that a boy be homeless and that there's room for him. No boy ever leaves Boys Town except to better himself. Our spirit extends far beyond our grounds, and there's scarcely a city in the United States that I visit, but someone comes up, says, Hello, do you remember me? I'm Johnny Jones from Boys Town. Our boys are given an education to fit them to meet life, and they make good. It's a deep satisfaction to me to receive letters from young men who have not forgotten this, young men writing on the stationery of well-established firms, like the lawyer who worked his way through a state university and is now the youngest practicing lawyer in his state. It proves to me, as nothing else ever has, that there's something more thrilling than boy meets girl. It's boy finds himself. If you're interested in these success stories, as I am, you may be glad to know that I'll soon have a radio program based on Boys Town histories, and I hope you'll let me know if they interest you. I'm sure many of you saw the MGM picture called Boys Town with tonight's star Spencer Tracy playing the part of uh, Father Flanagan. It's a humbling experience to see yourself played by someone else. No one was more delighted than I when Spencer won the Academy Award for being me. I still lie awake nights wishing I were really as fine as he made me. And in case you don't know it, when Spencer received that little statue, he didn't take it home and put it proudly on the mantelpiece. He wrapped it all up securely, addressed it to Father Flanagan at Boys Town, Nebraska, and took it to the post office. If I'd won the award myself, I couldn't be more proud to look at it daily as I do. The boys are pleased as punch, and the little figure is a member in good standing at Boys Town. Thank you, Mr. DeMille, for the privilege of being a guest on the Lux Radio Theater. If I may, I'll tell you a secret. We listen to your program at Boys Town. I'll bet right now that the boys are hoping with me that Bill will be the right guy before the end. That's it. You have earned a nation's gratitude, Father Flanagan, for remembering boys whom the world forgot. In Hollywood again, we resume A Man's Castle, starring Spencer Tracy and Loretta Young. <laughs> It's a few hours before the robbery, planned by Bill and Bragg. Over on Broadway, the last act of a musical comedy is drawing to a close. Bill waits in the wing. At the finish of her number, Faye LaRue runs from the stage into Bill's arms. Oh, I just forget. Yeah, i got to see you a minute. Come on over here. Worried hard to forget, but you shouldn't. We're closing the show next week. It looks like that trip to Italy is in the bag. How does that sound? Great, but I can't go. Can't go? Are you kidding? I told you my trademark, didn't I? Subject to change without notice. I know, but I've arranged everything. I'm sorry, but I can't go. What's happened? 
I let myself in for something on the installment plan. What is it? I'm in a jam. Oh, I guess I know what it is. It's a girl. You're a fortune teller. It is, isn't it? Search me. I won't know myself for a while. Oh. Oh, I see. Yeah, and I won't be around then to find out. Listen, don't be a sap. If you're taking it on the run, you might as well run to Italy. No. No, it's different now. I don't know why, but it is. So long, Faye. Good luck. Easy to meet. Hard to forget. What'd I tell you, Bill? I can open this safe with a nail file. You ain't got it open yet. Shh, not so loud. Hey. Hey, look at this. What are you doing there? Look at this gadget here. What is it? Ain't that a hot one? Wait till I wind it up and see what it does. <clears throat> Say, what are we here for? To kick in this safe or play with toys? Come on. Just a second. I want to see how it works. Cut that out. Give me that. Keep your hands up. What's the matter with you? You want to wake up the old geezer? If this wakes him up, what's going to happen when you blow that safe? I still think you ought to go back and tap him on the head like I told you. I'd feel a lot better if he was gagged and tied up. Nah. Ira wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, just the same, you go over and open that window there. What for? We're up three stories. There's a fire escape. Sure is a swell night out. Look, you can see the old river from here. And the camp, too. The moon sure looks slick on that water. Yeah, I think when I blow out of here, I'll hit the waves instead of the ties. Maybe on a freighter. Did you ever go downtown and get the smell of them ships that come in from China and them places? I wonder what Hoositz is doing. I'm going to take this toy home to her. She can give it to the kid. Will you can that and lend me a hand? We're going to get out of here. Bill, listen, will you? Shut up. What's the matter with you? You know, I don't like this job. What? I don't like it. Are you nuts? Maybe, but I got a funny idea. I always got along before without pulling this kind of a stunt. I got along swell. I don't want to change my luck. You mean you're walking out? Yeah, I'll see you around. Oh, no, you don't. Get back here. You ain't going to try to stop me, are you? No, but... Then shut up. If I feel Bill. like... Listen. There's someone outside. It's Ira. Get out of the window. Who's there? Get out, quick. Stand her out, shoot. Don't move, do you hear? Sure. Hi, Ira. Bill. Yeah, Bill. Hey, for a guy that reads Bibles, you shoot pretty straight, don't you? Son of a gun, you might have killed me. Serve you right if I did. Somebody ought to teach you a lesson. Young squirt like you going around robbing places. Yeah, it's a low-down thing to do with that, ain't it? But if you had that money as bad as I do, you wouldn't be so particular. Who was that man with you? The one that got away? Him? I don't remember the name. I never met the guy before tonight. I see. All right, Bill. What's the matter, Pop? What are you looking so sour about? Are you disappointed in me? I'm not thinking of you. I'm thinking of your wife. My what? Your wife, Trina, who trusted herself into your hands, who looks up to you. My wife. Hmm. Never thought of Trina as a wife. She just... Well, she's just Trina. What's that? Somebody set off the burglar alarm. There'll be cops all over the place in a few minutes. Well, what's she standing there for? Go on, beat it. Hurry before they get here. Go on. Okay, Ira, thanks. Did you call me, Bragg? Yeah, come in quick. It's about that guy of yours. Bill? What? He got nabbed robbing the safe at the toy factory. They caught him with the goods. Oh, no, you're joking, Bragg. Bill wouldn't do a thing like that. Bill ain't a thief. That's just it, stepping out of his class. That's why he got caught. And he was shot, too, trying to get away. Shot? Wait a minute, honey. Don't get upset. He may go up the river for a spell, but I'm still around. I'll always be around, baby, to take care of you. Let me out of here. There's no hurry. I'll be here. Only with Bill and the jug, you're going to need a man around. Come on, kid. You might as well shake yourself out of it. Mooning around won't get you no place. He's gone, ain't he? I tell you, he's gone. You're a liar, Bragg. He ain't gone. Flossie. Bill just got home. I saw him go into the shack a minute ago. Bill. Bill. 
It was mighty decent of you, Bragg, to offer to take care of Trina. Didn't know you had it in you. Look, Flossie, nobody asked you to butt in. I'm getting sick of your two-time and brag. Very sick. Ah, shut up. Go on, beat it. Stand still, Bill. Let me fix it. Here, hand me that bandage. It's all right, I'm telling you. Just graze me. Plot a little meat off. What's eating you? You think it was you got drilled instead of me? Oh, I wished it was me. Bill, why did you do it? Why? I couldn't check out leaving you high and dry, could I? Uh, that dough would have taken care of you fine, but I flopped. Well, I'm glad you did. I wouldn't have taken that money anyway. I'd have given it back. Yeah, how do you suppose you'd have got along? It takes money to have a kid, don't it? Oh, honestly. For a strong, husky man, you're awful afraid of a little thing that ain't even born yet. My goodness, if I'd known it was going to scare you that much, I never would have told you. I mean, gosh, Bill, I'd, I'd just gone away myself, but... I didn't know you were such a coward, Doug. Coward? Sure. Afraid of a baby. <laughs> Why, it's the most natural thing in the world, you big fool. They're born all the time, and if if they happen to be men kids, they just never grow up. They just keep reaching for the clouds all the time and listening to train whistles. Oh, Bill, you're such a silly. Robin is safe to get money when you always said you never had no use for money. It wasn't for me. For me, I know. But I don't need it. I don't need anything, not even you, Bill. It ain't as if you ever said you loved me. You, you never did. And I don't blame you. Don't you suppose I know I'm just a stick in the mud of a barnacle? That's what I am. I've held you back and messed up your plans, but I didn't mean to. Honestly, I didn't. You can go, sweetheart, and stay as long as you like. And maybe someday you'll come back. Huh? Oh, not for good, I don't mean. Just, just for a visit, sort of. You might get lonesome and, and curious and want to know what your son looks like, maybe. Gosh, Bill, even birds can't fly all the time. They get tired and want to come home sometimes. They got nests, ain't they? Trina. Oh, Bill, please. I want you to feel right. I want you to be happy. I'll do anything, Bill, if you'll be happy. I'll give up anything, but please, Bill, be happy. Bill? Yeah, what? You better get out of here now. Cops are on their way. How do you know? I got inside information from a stool pigeon, pal of mine. Your freight train's waiting. You better hop aboard. No, I'm sticking around. Take my word for it. If you hang around here, you're due for the stir. And I don't mean a weekend. The quicker you scram, the better. No, I ain't gonna leave Hoosets. Well, you dumb sap, why not take her with you? Did you ever think of that? No. What about it, kid? You want to come? Wherever you go. You know what it means. Wherever you go, Bill. All right, get your things. What are you thinking of? Oh, I'll certainly miss it. It was such a beautiful stove. <laughs> ah, you can always get another one on the installment plan. A better one, too. <laughs> but it'll never really be ours unless we stick in one place long enough to pay for it. And, and you don't want that. You want to be free, Bill. Yeah. You know, I've been thinking a lot about that freedom business. I believe in it. It's great stuff. But, uh, well, maybe it ain't always a question to keep it on the move. There's another kind of freedom, too. Up here in your head and here in your chest where your heart is. Bill. And right now I got a very funny feeling, Trina. You know, even birds have got a home an instant. And I got a feeling we're going home. Home? Where is that, Bill? Well, I don't know. Somewhere. Someplace that suits us. We gotta find it soon, too. You know, a freight car had no place to bring up a kid. Oh, Bill. <laughs> little hoosets. Funny little hoosets. <laughs> Leaving Bill and Trina on a train headed home, we sidetrack Spencer Tracy and Loretta Young for a few moments. 
And before I say anything else, I want to congratulate Spence on his magnificent achievement. Yes, the way he wins Academy Awards, he could be prosecuted for maintaining a monopoly. <laughs> oh, yes, I know, but I was referring to something else. You know, Spence has uh, conquered what to him are still greater heights. After five long years of terrific plugging, <laughs> success at last is in sight. Time and time again, he's been right on the verge, and he never could do it. But now, finally... Hey, 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 hey. <clears throat> Take it easy. Maybe some member of the EGBTS is listening <laughs> in. The, the, the what? What's that? That is a very powerful organization, CB, which has dogged me for five years. EGBTS <laughs> is the Everybody Goes But Tracy Society. <laughs> in brief, since 1934, I've been saying that next month I'm going to Europe for a vacation. But at last, it looks as if I'm really going. In April, I'll be on my way for London and Paris. Uh, April isn't here yet, Spence. You've made plans before, you know. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be April Fool. <laughs> After all, the best laid plans of mice and leading men. Uh, if you're trying to discourage me, you might as well give up. I'm going in spite of the fact that few things ever come up to long-planned expectations. Of course, there are exceptions, like being on this program. For and uh, the product that it stands for. Excuse me, Ben, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> Go right ahead, Loretta. He's used to waiting. Well, I was simply going to say that in all the years I've been using Lux soap, I've always found it delightful to use, and much more important is its wonderful help in keeping my complexion smooth and lovely. So, naturally, I never overlook a chance to put in a good word for such a good friend. But getting back to your philosophy... Spencer, no, 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 no. Let's talk about you now. And your third telephone pick, Alexander Graham Bell. I hear it rings the... Uh, what shall I say? Oh, uh, never mind. I follow you, and I'll, I'll know better when I get back from the preview tomorrow night in San Francisco Fair. But where did you get the idea that I had done two other telephone pictures? Well, I was thinking of private number in the call of the wild. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I didn't see either one of them. Take it. And uh, Mr. Tracy, let's just make believe that I've hung up on you, huh? Many thanks, Mr. Mill. Good night. Uh-huh. You've turned everybody's home tonight into a man's castle. Mr. DeMille has an important announcement for you about next Monday night's stars and play. You'll hear it in just a moment. Featured in tonight's play were Martha Wentworth as Flossie, Perry Ivins as Ira, Margaret Brayton as Faye LaRue, Paul Hilton as a small boy, Frank Nelson, and Lou Merrill as manager of restaurant, and Sybil Harris as a mother. A Man's Castle was adapted from the, from the motion picture of the same name, produced by Columbia Pictures Corporation. Spencer Tracy's next MGM film is Northwest Passage. Louis Silvers appeared through courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio, where he's in charge of music for the story of Alexander Graham Bell. Be sure to listen to the new Lux Daytime radio program, The Life and Love of Dr. Susan, the story of a courageous woman in search of her destiny. You can hear it over most of these stations in the United States every afternoon, Monday through Friday, at 2.15 Eastern Time, 1.15 Central Time, 3.15 Mountain Time, and 2.15 Pacific Time. This new daytime program, The Life and Love of Dr. Susan, comes to you in addition to the Lux Radio Theater. Mr. DeMille. California and Alaska had their furious, fabulous gold rushes, and no less fantastic was the wild scramble for silver in Colorado. Out of this mad race for riches, a strange man emerged. Around his life, our play next Monday night is woven. His rise to power, his dreams, and around the two women whose devotion to him was his last and greatest possession. Arousing on the screen, our play is called Silver Dollar and brings back an old friend to our stage, that splendid star Edward Arnold. He'll appear in the company of two widely requested favorites. Number one, and from the original cast, number two. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Edward Arnold and number one in Silver Dollar with number two. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. Your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.